Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this SDL 2.0 tutorial videos. Uh, in this video we're going to be creating our game timer and this is to uh, limit our frame rate for our game so it's set it to 60 fps or 120 fps or so on and for that we will create our timer class so in the header file we'll create a new timer.h and for that We'll have if not defined underscore timer underscore h define underscore timer underscore h and then end f class timer and our timer class will be a singleton just like all our classes so far so we will have private variables first one being a timer pointer which will be our instance of course this will be static so static timer pointer as instance um, as well as a few non-static variables uh, first one being an unsigned int which will be um, start ticks an unsigned int which will be the last ticks and then a float which will be our delta time and another float as our time scale next up our public functions um, and just like the other classes we'll have our static timer pointer instance and a static void release. Uh, for our non-static functions, we will have void reset, float delta time, which will give us back our delta time, and then void time scale. That's for setting our time scale. So we'll give it T a float t as well as a float time scale which will return our time scale variable and finally an update for our timer and for our private uh, functions we'll just have the, the constructor and destructor so and that should be it for our timer class um, of course since we're going to be using a few sdl functions we will include sdl.h and that is it for our header file so let's create our cpp so a new item and dot cpp we will create timer and include timer.h now to initialize our instance we will do timer pointer timer yes, instance is going to start off as being null and the first two functions to implement are going to be our static functions so uh, timer pointer timer instance if instance is null as instance is going to be equal to a new timer and then we'll just return the instance and then our release function void timer release and all this would do is just release our instance so delete as instance and set as instance to null and that should be it for our uh, static functions next up we'll do our constructor and destructor so timer timer and timer destructor as well so in the constructor we'll just set our time scale to 1.0 and we will reset all our values 
So since we're doing that, let's implement our reset function. So timer, um, our reset function will be void. So void reset. I will say that the start takes oh, timer reset. So our start ticks are going to be equal to SDL get ticks. And what get ticks does is that it returns uh, the number of milliseconds since the library initialized. So for our reset, our start ticks will be get ticks. And our elapsed ticks are going to be equal to zero, as well as our m delta time, which is going to be equal to 0, 0.0. Next up is our getter for the delta time. So timer, timer delta time. And all this would do is just return our delta time. So m delta time. And finally, um, the time scale getters and setters. So for that, we'll do void time scale or timer time scale and float t for that our m time scale is going to be equal to t and float timer time scale and what this will do is just return our time scale so just return time scale and for our update, so update will be the last function we implement in timer. We'll say that our elapsed, um, so void up timer update. We'll say that our elapsed ticks are going to be equal to SDL get ticks minus our M start ticks. So we just want the difference between the two. So the elapsed ticks are the, the ticks that happened in between the last reset and our time right now. And our delta time is going to be equal to our elapsed ticks times 0 0.001. So since um, since the ticks are in milliseconds under int, we need to convert that back to being a float. And since it's in milliseconds, we just multiplied by um, one thousandth, so we can get and we can get our value in seconds. And this will be it for our timer class. So since we have that done, we can go ahead and give it and uh, give it a test and see if it works correctly. So in our game manager, we will include the timer class. So timer.h, and we'll create a variable for timer as well. So timer pointer and timer. Now in our game.cpp, we can initialize that. So that will be in the constructor. So in our constructor, we'll say our timer is going to be equal to timer instance. Um, that is m timer is going to be equal to our m timer instance, and since when an instance is created, it's reset, so we don't need to do a reset as soon as we create it. And right in here, we will say timer m timer reset. Um, actually, no, M timer update. So we'll update the timer at the beginning of each um, at the beginning of each iteration of this while loop. And we'll take our graphics out of this while loop and put it outside here. And finally, we'll say that if the timers delta time is more than or equal to 1.0f divided by our frames per second. While our frame rate, let's declare a variable for our frame rate now. So if we go back here, we'll say constant int 
um, frame rate. And let's start it off at being 60. So we'll have a frame rate of 60. Of course, we can change this whenever we want. So our target frame rate is 60. So we'll say uh, our delta time, if it go, if our delta time is more than or equal to one over our frame rate, then do a render. And just to test this out, we'll do a printf uh, to see it in the console and see what our delta time will be equal to. So we'll say print f delta time and then ampersand f and we'll give it m timer delta time. And finally, after we render, and probably after we update right here later on, we will just say the timer reset. So we'll reset our timer again, so that it starts off from being zero, and once we update, we can increment it back again to being less than, uh, more than or equal to one over our frame rate. So now if we try to run this and see how it goes, And okay, uh, maybe we should add a break line, a line break right here. So a line break. And finally, we need to release our timer. So we'll say timer release in the destructor. And M timer is going to be equal to null. So let's go ahead and run it again and see what we get. And as you can see, it's about 0 0.017. If we get a calculator, so we want 60 frames per second, so it's going to be 1 over 60. So it should be about 0 0.16.6 uh, seconds for each frame, or uh, 166 milliseconds. And this is what we are getting right here, so 0 0.017. And if we go back and say, let's say we want 120 frame rate, and we run it, it is about 0 0.009. So if we do 1 over 120, there we go. So this is just so that we can have a constant frame rate and we only do updates during that frame rate. Uh, and we can also use that delta time to multiply it by let's say our speed or something so we can um, we can have our movement or our translations time dependent instead of frame dependent. So this covers the second part of the tutorial videos. I really hope that helped and I will see you in the next video. If you have any uh, suggestions or questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.